Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here today. Uh, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and like and share the post and uh, comment, uh, or all three, uh, if you will. And I appreciate that very much. And then grab your Bible or your phone or your tablet um, and turn with me to the 93rd Psalm. And uh, Unless you've got the 93rd Psalm memorized. Otherwise, uh, if you can, if you're not driving, uh, turn with me and let's look at, uh, at this psalm. Uh, it's a good little psalm. Uh, as I mentioned, as we were looking at uh, the 92nd psalm, uh, some uh, connect, uh, some people connect the 92nd and the 93rd psalm together. Um, uh, in fact, they connect uh, the 92nd through the 96th psalm uh, and uh, connect them all kind of together in one little um, section, um, but um, don't know that for sure. Uh, again, this psalm doesn't have uh, a, a superscription, doesn't tell us who wrote it. We don't really know um, the setting, uh, but um, for this psalm, the, the background to it is not really uh, all uh, that important uh, because it's clear what um, the uh, author uh, is writing about. Israel uh, is, uh, to my knowledge, the only nation um, ever uh, throughout history uh, to be set up uh, as a theocracy. Now, they're not that way now, uh, but in their uh, original uh, creation, as God designed and, uh, uh, and brought together the nation of Israel, they were a theocracy. Uh, and what that uh, what that means is is they they were they're the only nation again that I know of uh, throughout throughout all of history at, at any time uh, that has uh, had a period again in their original form where they did not have an actual appointed human uh, being as their uh, as their leader. Uh, nobody, no, no man, um, or that had been voted in, or had uh, by uh, by political coup or military coup, whatever assumed power. Uh, but in their original uh, founding, Israel was a nation uh, that was led by God Himself. Uh, you may remember. Uh, in uh, the Old Testament, uh, as you read the Old Testament, uh, that uh, finally the people of Israel uh, went and demanded uh, an earthly king because uh, all the nations around them had earthly kings during, uh, again, the time uh, of, um, of Samuel. Uh, and truthfully, that's when much of their trouble began, uh, was when they decided they needed a uh, an, an earthly uh, human uh, leader. And so what we have in this psalm uh, is a psalm that um, lifts up that, that government, uh, praises God uh, for leading uh, his people, uh, for being in control uh, of his kingdom. Uh, and where the application for you and I, I think comes in is that uh, what the psalmist uh, does here is, is, again, he's remembering who's in control. Uh, he's remembering uh, and, and praising uh, God for the fact that he is ultimately, you see it in the first three words, uh, if you look there with me, the first three words uh, of, uh, of the psalm, the Lord reigneth. Uh, and, and so the psalmist is uh, praising God uh, for his position uh, as ruler uh, and in control, uh, reigning over uh, not only Israel, but uh, to the, the, the whole world. Um, is, uh, and again, this is a psalm that's, again, I said uh, uh, about the 92nd psalm, but it's kind, of, it's kind of what I think of when I think of a psalm. This psalm is just straight um, praise uh, and, uh, and glorifying God. And the real comfort, uh, I think, for us in, in this psalm in uh, 2021 um, is that, um, and, and this, uh, this 
uh, goes out um, in, in, in several different formats, uh, goes out um, obviously uh, on, uh, in, on Facebook uh, Live, um, it goes out um, on YouTube, it goes out as a podcast, and um, I, I can see from the background numbers um, of these that uh, we have people who watch and listen from um, other countries. Uh, and, and, and different spots around the world. Um, and uh, the beauty for, for each of us uh, listening to that psalm, whether you're in America uh, with, uh, with the president, whether you're listening, uh, watching in some country that's got a king or a, a ruthless dictator um, or a queen or whatever, um, prime minister, whatever rule your country finds itself in, this psalm reminds us that ultimately uh, God is in control, uh, that uh, he is uh, actually, uh, again, whatever nation you call home, uh, whatever, whatever, you know, whoever you call your earthly uh, leader, king, president, whatever, uh, we are reminded in this psalm that we are uh, citizens of a different kingdom, uh, and that we have a, a ruler uh, in God himself. And the flip of that is then the responsibility we have uh, as believers, as members of God's kingdom to represent uh, his kingdom, uh, to be ambassadors, as we are called uh, in the New Testament for uh, this kingdom. And so uh, spent longer than I meant to kind of getting into this psalm. Let's uh, move quickly actually into, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, into the, the text of the psalm. You know, we've already looked at those opening three words, the Lord reigns. Uh, that was the attitude, that was the perspective uh, of um, of the psalmist. I joked while well, I go to open your Bible unless you have this psalm memorized. Uh, I would suggest to you, you may not can memorize um, all uh, five verses, uh, but if you can remember three words, um, they have the, the, the potential to transform your life and see you through uh, some very dark and difficult times. The Lord reigneth. Uh, no matter where you find yourself, no matter what circumstance you find yourself in, God reigns. And so the psalmist um, begins this psalm by acknowledging and recognizing uh, the, the reign, the rule, uh, the authority uh, of, uh, of God himself. Uh, he is clothed with majesty. Uh, the Lord uh, is clothed with strength, uh, wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also established that it cannot be moved. Uh, and so he, he, again, as even though the, the narrow focus uh, of this psalm is the Lord reigns over Israel, uh, the broader focus and statement uh, of the psalm is that, well, he reigns and rules over Israel, but he is in control uh, of everything. He, he has, uh, he's clothed with majesty and uh, strength. Um, and so that he is, again, uh, the, uh, the authority. Uh, he is, um, again, he has girded himself. The Lord, it cannot be moved, uh, he says. It, it is, uh, again, an established uh, fact uh, of his strength. Um, you know, we all understand the word strength. Um, you know, the Hebrew word that's translated strength there means strength. Uh, you, know, uh, it, it, you know, we know what it means. It, he, he's strong. He's powerful. Uh, and that, uh, you know, his rule, his reign cannot be challenged, um, even though we may find ourselves in dark and desperate times. Um, they, uh, his rule cannot be challenged. And one of the things, uh, again, to keep in mind about a text like this uh, is, again, to remember those ancient days uh, when, uh, you know, in our world, generally speaking, uh, maybe not in every nation, but generally speaking, uh, the leader of the nation, uh, he, may, he may declare war, uh, he may start a war, uh, but he doesn't fight the war. Uh, in those days, uh, the king went out to battle. Uh, he went out and led his people. He 
He was a military leader. Uh, and so when the psalmist here is writing about uh, God as, uh, as a strong, mighty power, uh, he's saying God is a warrior. Uh, one that uh, has the strength, and, and he, he puts on the armor. He girds himself and goes out to fight uh, on behalf uh, of his people. Thy throne is established of old, thou art from everlasting. Uh, and so he, he is making a bold statement here uh, that our God um, is on the throne, has always been on the throne, and will always be be on the throne. Uh, and so again, while the psalmist was writing specifically uh, about Israel, uh, for you and I today, we know that God never changes. He's still a God who is uh, reigning. He's still a God who's clothed with majesty. He's still clothed with strength. Uh, he has still uh, established the world. He still cannot be moved. His throne has always been established, and he's still on it. Uh, and so everything the psalmist wrote, in, in particular in his mind, thinking about Israel uh, as followers uh, of that same God, a God who never changes, we have that same uh, comfort and assurance that no matter uh, where we find ourselves and what situation uh, we find ourselves in. Uh, and uh, as believers, as New Testament believers, uh, as this world goes on, we know that the New Testament teaches us uh, that this world is going to get worse, uh, that man is going to continue uh, to fall away, uh, that they're going to continue to go further from God. Uh, you know, we, you know, if you've been alive long and you've watched the news, you know that we see things uh, on the news today that we never imagined uh, would happen. We see people doing things in public we, that once upon a time they wouldn't do in private. Uh, and we know it's just going to get worse. But God is still on the throne. He still reigns. He's still clothed with majesty. He's still clothed with strength. And his throne uh, is from uh, everlasting. And he is our mighty warrior. Uh, and so this psalm is a great psalm uh, of encouragement for us and, uh, and uh, challenge to us to always uh, to keep our focus uh, to keep our attention, uh, our mind uh, on the God who reigns uh, and sets on the throne. All right, I hope that puts some spring in your step today and uh, encourages you to serve uh, a God. And as the words uh, of that uh, little chorus we sometimes sing, our God reigns. Have a great day. We'll see you here tomorrow.